play. Look at that. From okay. fighting games that breed local communities to massive multiplayer games with guilds that span the globe, gaming has always been an amazing medium for spending time with people you care about. And that's why, four years ago, we built Discord to bring people together around games. However, it's become much more than that. People use Discord to build communities not just for games, but to arrange trombone symphonies, for learning a second language, and even keeping up with the latest sneaker drops. People use Discord to talk with friends who've moved to different cities or with their significant others in long distance relationships. People use Discord as just a place to hang out. It's become your personal space, your digital living room, a place to avoid the noise and fatigue of most social media. It's your server with your rules with the people you want in there. And it's that personalization, the idea of a server as the space for you and your friends to hang out that makes Discord such a compelling place to be. It's become a place where people feel vulnerable enough to talk to others and where those with a kind ear can listen and support and acknowledge one another. Because Discord's not just another social media platform. It's not a feed where people show off their highlight reels. It's not about content, it's about conversation. It's a place to celebrate the victories of competitive gaming one day, lament a bad breakup the next, and talk fantasy football a week later. It's a live forum where people go to talk and learn and understand each other. Discord will continue to be the best place for hanging out and gaming. A place to chat whether it's discussing new strats for your favorite game or talking about a rough day at school or work. Because spending time with people you care about is important. And if the over 50 million monthly users are indicative of anything, Discord is here to stay. And there's so many more games to play and experiences to share. Yay, sizzle reel. Okay, cool. So thank you for that. Uh, sitting through that, you guys already know what Discord is. You have accounts, etc. You might use it for games. You might use it for work. You might use it for a variety of different things. Um, originally, Discord was built by game developers, um, actually some mobile game developers that started OpenFaint. So those of you that are in the mobile business, uh, it was founded by the founders and original uh, president and CEO of OpenFaint um, as a place for gamers to connect in small groups. So the original design was small groups of friends. We call it the treehouse idea. Um, and you'll actually, you'll actually experience some of the, the technical architecture and like, like our DMs, direct messages, things like that are built for 10 or less. Um, so there's still some of that, that it was built for the private conversations of friends around games. Of course, people can adopt it. It's an open platform for whatever they would like. Um, some basic numbers, these are all public right now. Discord publishes our numbers. We're a private startup still in our fifth year, I guess. I've been there for about two and a half, almost three years. Um, we publish our numbers about every six months cadence, so m uh, May and then December. So at the end of December, we'll see this. These are our main numbers, about 250 million registered users. Um, we add about two million new registered users a week. So if you figure these are May numbers and you do the cocktail and napkin math, you can um, do some basic trajectory on this. Uh, big thing to point out there is the mobile app. We're actually outgrowing now on mobile app adoption. People using the mobile app now uh, as a new entrance point to Discord is bigger than desktop. So again, Discord started as a place where people would talk about PC games in particular, because that's what we were solving for. Um, but interesting to see the growth of the mobile app uh, as well as other platforms. Um, Super engaged, billions of minutes. You guys don't need all this stuff, but it's just lots of engagement across the platform. Um, how do we make money? A lot of people ask that question. Well, there's two parts of a startup. You've got growth. How do you get users? And we just talked about the user numbers there. And then how do you make money? Um, so Discord's been in the experimental phase in um, monetization for the last sort of two years. Um, and what we've kind of settled in on is on-platform um, native monetization. So this is a product called Nitro. It's a, subscri a subscription product. Um, there's a $4.99 price point and a $9.99 price point. It basically gives you on application things like animated emojis, uploaded uh, bigger file sizes, um, certain things, maybe some badging. We've just added server boosting, which actually changed the trajectory of, of Discord. Uh, truth be told, we um, about two years ago, when I came on, we were moving into game distribution. We thought we could sell PC games to folks or have a game subscription product. Uh, and if any of you guys know that marketplace, it's pretty difficult to get in. Um, and we've since retreated from game distribution and focused on the um, native uh, application subscription product. So this is how we make money, in case anybody's wondering. But Discord is actually all about communities and community building, which is what we're here to talk about today. 
uh, which I, hopefully that is either how you use it to talk to your friends or your family or your coworkers or the people that are in your guild or whatever it happens to be, but Discord is built around communities. Um, I had a show of hands, everybody here, although you're coming in late, which is okay. Do you use Discord? Do you, have, you understand? Okay, awesome. Do you, uh, yes, okay, cool. So this is a Discord server, right? Uh, we use a server, we term server technology. It is not a rack in some air conditioned place like I used to think about servers when I first got into this industry. The server is the essence of the architecture of when you join something in Discord. Um, on the left hand side, you have all of your different servers. On the next panel over, you have all of the channels in the server. In this particular case, this is the official server of Subnautica, which is a, a game, a very popular game. In the middle, you have the chat within that channel. And over on the right, you have the people that are members of that server. If you guys are all users, you're probably familiar with this. I know it's over, uh, probably a little bit of overkill. Um, right now, there are 11 and a half million active servers on Discord, servicing those 250 million registered users, 50 million uh, monthly actives, and again, those are from May, so those numbers are quite a bit more now. Um, but a majority of them are actually small groups, or what we have, what we consider the treehouse concept. Private servers where friends or people with like uh, similarities hang out and talk about whatever they want to talk about. Those are considered private servers. You have to have a special invite to be invited in. Again, if you guys use Discord, you're probably familiar with that. However, a byproduct of this, the success of Discord was large communities, whether they are Reddit-based, whether they are official from a game developer or server, we'll talk a little bit about more of them. And we now have servers that are pushing the limit of our technology. Um, uh, we'll, but I'll show you what those is, but we consider the large servers anywhere between 100,000 and 500,000 members, all the way down to three people talking about their favorite game. So it, it, the technology is designed to, to support all of that. So a private server, small private servers, have to have an invite, have to be invited by the owner of the server, uh, people from the outside can't come in. You can have a public server that is called a community server. These are very common, like a Reddit, um, or if it is somebody like maybe a uh, popular streamer or an esports team or somebody that says, hey, come into our server, You're in anybody's invited, uh, but it hasn't been verified. If you are a game developer, uh, an official esports organization or a musician, you can apply for what's called a verified server. Doesn't matter if you're a mobile game developer, a console game developer, a PC game developer, you can apply to, um, to, for verification. Um, consider a verified server much like you would a verified Twitter account where you have a check mark that says this is the official place on Discord where you can chat and learn about GameX, eSports Team Y, Musician Z. There we go, okay. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about verified servers because my assumption is most people here belong to either a mobile game organization or mobile game developer or publisher or something along those lines or would like that. So that's my assumption here. Um, you can build communities around Discord without verification, uh, but it just, there's a few things that you might be missing here. So what does it mean if you get a verified server? A verified server means specifically that is owned and operated by the publisher, the developer, the esports team, or the person, uh, the, 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 musical or, the music organization. And we give them features and functions um, that help them market their okay. server to their consumers and their community. Um, things like that server badge, if you look up at Subnautica, there's a little check mark up there. If you look up at that same area up there, you'll see that there's a little piece of art. If you've ever joined a Discord server, there's a splash screen. Um, if it is a generic, you'll get, you'll get generic art. If it is a verified server, you'll be able to use your custom art for your organizations or your game, et cetera. The vanity URL, which is extremely important because that means it is a Discord, oops, excuse me, discord.gg slash your game name, right? And that allows things like what, we start, what we're starting to see more and more and more with game companies and people that are utilizing Discord is like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, this is our Twitch channel, here's our official Discord. So Discord now for many, many companies is starting to become a part of the social bar of this is where we do official things on Discord. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about news channel in just a minute and, and some of that because there's 
things that we are building specifically for verified servers, specifically for official communities on Discord, so that you can maximize use, utilizing the platform. Um, you want to get an idea of some of the big servers on Discord? Um, well, here they are, and these are all the verified servers. Guys at the top, not surprising, although interestingly enough, um, Minecraft being a Microsoft-owned product and a relatively uh, younger skewing and multi-platform uh, means that they've adopted the platform in a very ag aggressive and very positive way. Um, they're actually at the upper echelon right now. Um, about a month and a half ago, we had a limit of 100,000 members. We're now at 500,000 members, constantly pushing the technology so we can support these large communities. So again, I go back to that story of like, we were built to serve small communities, and now we're like, oh gosh, what do we do with people that want to stretch to 500,000, people that want to stretch to a million? Fortnite, not surprising. Um, for those of you that are mobile publishers, you know, PUBG Mobile actually outperforms PUBG PC in their verified server. Uh, we see things like Clash Royale. We see things last day on Earth. Uh, interestingly enough, we have a Brazilian esports uh, server that tracks in the top 10. Um, Spell Spellbreak, interestingly enough, is not even out yet. It's in alpha. So people that are adopting this platform, it's not just the big publishers that have big games it's people that are willing to invest in the technology and understand the technology to drive their user base. Um, I, I show you some other ones, some top esports servers, um, some top mobile servers, um, you know, Vanglory, um, uh, the, uh, again, it, it, there are plenty, plenty of uh, applications for utilizing Discord as your official community. Uh, so, now we're going to talk a little bit about like what are the things that a, uh, a verified server currently does, but also our roadmap so that you can get an idea of some of the features that we're creating to make these even more popular. Uh, on Discord, it's very important because we are a startup. We are 185 people based out of San Francisco, servicing 250 million people worldwide. So we still have to decide and test and experiment. Uh, many of you, if you're in the development side, familiar with this idea, you come, you ideate, you do some early, ex early experimentation, you might do, widen that out to some other folks, and then you scale the product or you scale the feature. Uh, I only point this out because I'm going to tell you some of these uh, features and where they exist on that, uh, that, compendi uh, that timeline. So this was probably the number one request that we get from people, which is, if I have a verified server, let's just take Minecraft, for example, and I have 500,000 members in my official verified server. There are probably 10x that that use Discord and play Minecraft. So do the math, 5 million people. This is a little bit of cocktail napkin math, and some of that's not public, but somewhere between 5 and 10x that are actually playing the game that don't belong to the official server because they don't want to. They're in their tree houses with their buddies or their friends playing the game there. So we created the uh, server um, channel follow so that if somebody was a fan of your game and has a private community or a private server, they can subscribe to your official news from your verified server. So this allows, if you are a fan of, say, League of Legends, but you don't want to belong to the official Riot League of Legends server, but you and your college friends play a ton of league, you can get the official news piped into your private server. Uh, and it allows things like whether it's eSports, whether it's new champions, whether it's patch notes, it's really up to the server um, to decide what news they pass out. But you must have a verified server in order to activate channel following. A directory, this sounds ridiculous, but early on, Discord didn't allow you to search for, for things like, I want to join the, the Fortnite server, or I want to join the Clash Royale server, where do I find it? You'd have to go to Reddit, or you would have to go to the um, activation pages, the marketing pages of said game. Uh, we've recently launched server discovery so that people can go and search and find verified or partnered servers. Uh, we have a home feed now where when you launch Discord, for those of you, you're all members of it, when you relaunch Discord, it'll put you to the activity feed or the home feed, and this will show you things that you will be interested in based on the games that you play and the games that your friends play and the servers that you belong to. 
So this is a discovery, a social um, engagement tool where you're able to see, hey, I'm interested in this server because I play the game. Let's join here. Or um, my friend was just playing this game. I'm interested in learning more about that. The, the, the uh, activity fee is, feed is a discovery mechanism. Looking for group. Now this is in early experimentation. Another feature that people asked specifically around multiplayer games that require communication. If you think about Discord, that's at its core kind of the, the genesis of it. Looking for group is a channel that we're allowing verified servers to test where it can be a channel specifically for like-minded gamers to say, are you level blank on this game and would like to find and play with people that are your same level? Or maybe you just want a casual game with people that want to chat. Or maybe it's, and what this allows you to do is create a look for game channel or looking for group channel. If someone were to click that join button and the group were to fill, whether it's six or eight or four, or whatever the game allows, it would then drop those people into a private direct message and they are able to talk specifically. So it's, it's a frictionless way for people to use voice comms based on similar group asks. Um, of course, we are all interested in data. Um, and we are rolling out data analytics for those folks that have a verified server. Um, you're gonna find things like where did they come from? What was the activity that they had? Um, how much engagement do you have? On Discord we use two things, participation and communication. Participation means I read something, I emoticoned something, I said something in voice or I wrote something in text. Uh, communicator is we think the most highly engaged user and that's when they use voice or they use text to actually communicate to one another. So you will, if you had a verified server when we roll out server analytics, you will have access to those tools. Also, if you have channel following and you open it up for those private servers to be able to um, follow your news feed, you will have access to analytics about how many people that reached, what sort of impression engagement you had for those private servers. You won't know who they are, but you'll be able to know how many, how many it reached. So obviously, analytics is something that's been very, very important. Um, moderation, to some extent, um, we have a moderation. Uh, a lot of people come to us and say, look, I'm only a one-man community or one-person community management team. I can't handle a 24-7 global platform like Discord. So we have a moderation um, program where uh, you can apply to have us help you supply moderators. Uh, this is currently at no fee, and I say currently because we're a startup, <laughs> so you never know. But uh, it is a moderation program that helps you train your own moderators with the goal of um, becoming self-sufficient from a moderation perspective. We realize that moderation on social platforms is something from a, from a toxicity concern as well as a manpower. Bots, so there is a wide range. Discord has a quite a bit of open API technology that has allowed a third party, third party bots um, to be built. And there are a wide range of bots that do a ton of things that you can use in your server to help things like um, moderate, do, do, do uh, uh, assign roles, assign geos, you can, do, um, you can do polls, a variety of things. So I just wanna talk let you know that there's a wide-ranging bot community. And then the idea is like, how do you want to build your community? How do you want to support the games on this platform? It is open. There is no necessarily right or wrong answer to how to use it. We've got huge uh, games like Fortnite that open regional servers to service different languages. We've got Minecraft that's pushing us to create different technology. We've got folks that have a read-only server, which allows uh, people just to read and get information and actually not interact on the server itself. So the, the idea is that the tools are there for, um, for your particular usage. And I think we're gonna, I have, yeah, you guys will have access to this presentation. So these are some resources that you might have regarding where to go with some questions that you might have. And you gave me the one minute mark. That was about one minute, 456, four minutes of questions before cocktail hour. So the uh, Discord platform is basically, seems like it, it originated from like the needs of MMO games and the chat services that were kind of provided by that. And it kind of leads into an offline plus online type scenario. Mm -hmm. 
are there any plans to offer an SDK for PC mobile games so that you could integrate your channel into your game itself and then you would have a seamless transition for people in game and out of a game to stay connected during the services? So a lot of people, do, but the Discord use case is actually that in, in a lot of cases, which is if you're PC and you play, say, a Blizzard game and then you play a EA game and you're changing from Battle.net to Origin, right? The, is exactly that, or League client, or Steam. So that across PC absolutely already exists. One of the things that we're seeing is um, on console, and because we can't scrape, we don't have uh, data on games that people play on console or mobile. So we can see what people are playing on PC because of the executable, but we can't necessarily see it on console. One of the things that we found was that people were actually utilizing Discord on their mobile phone and putting their headphones in to be the audio and then their headsets in to be the game audio to the point where now there are six different headset manufacturers that use dual channel audio, one Bluetooth and one hardwired so that people can mix that. Um, as far as conversations with platforms, um, TBD, uh, if the consumers are doing it and the hardware manufacturers are doing it, there is a natural conversation. Um, a little bit more challenging for Discord to be, it's not meant as middleware, like a Vivox, if you're familiar with game dev. So it's not designed as that, some of the things that you would want from a spatial recognition of voice. Um, but definitely the mobile element, um, we're talking about a product called Discord Connect that would allow you to connect like a, like a Facebook Connect would. Um, so your Discord graph from a mobile game would, 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 would cross over. So, Six months, nine months, maybe next, maybe next uh, Game Daily Connect, we'll have more. Thank you. It's a good question, and we get, we get it a lot. Hi. Um, so I actually moderate several Discord servers awesome. across the, the full <laughs> gambit of, of topical relevance. So some that are game-related, some that are like business and entrepreneurial-related, et cetera. Yep. Um, a lot of our environment is also very casual, and we have a lot of bots that actually run game environments within the Discord environment itself. So like we have a Pokemon catching app bot yep. that exists that's pretty popular out there. We have like a bunch of like RPG tie-in that kind of simulate like a mud like experience within the Discord chat itself. Mm -hmm. Is that something that Discord itself is looking at as far as uh, allowing for like a more robust uh, capacity for individual like bot developers to kind of use Discord as almost like a game development platform, like S internal? It's a good question. So, so again, I came on two years, two and a half years ago, which which makes me I'm sort of a grandpa. Anyways, but uh, in the game industry, but um, but so the two things that were kind of like in the BD world, we called it Bot City, which is exactly that—a marketplace that's formally where to find the best. Uh, and the other was GameBridge, which is the invoice tech or chat and tech and, and voice. So like that 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 has been dancing around. Um, we definitely support it from a third-party API perspective, um, it, and we are constantly looking at how do we curate the best of the best and bring it in-house. Um, it comes with certain elements of responsibility to make sure that you're updating it, that you're actually deving it, that you're, there's some sort of certification process that goes along with that. Um, and again, like I said, we're only 180 people in San Francisco, so it, it's one of those Yes, we love that, and it's been on our radar, and we, we yeah, so yes. If it's any consolation, um, I use Discord more than I use Facebook or any other social media platform, and that's how I think of it. And um, we appreciate that, A, eh? and, also, and also, like, you know, they're, they're different. Um, it's, it's definitely back into that private, if you think about how it was Genesis, was like, we want, I want to talk with my friends that I care about this particular subject matter. Nothing against Facebook, I've been on it for years and years and years, but it, be, it, it is something different, which is, I call it my daily Christmas card, kind of, you know, where you're seeing what people that you may or may not be, it becomes a, it becomes a little bit of a different thing. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's exactly, and you can really privatize and really prioritize, and if you're like, if I want to be a part of a big community, I can do that as well. So, any other questions, or you keep going, I don't know. If I may, just sure. because this is an amazing opportunity, so thank you. Sure, yeah. Um, one more thing. Uh, that being said, since you mentioned like um, community and scaling, is that something that Discord is looking to help the community? Um, because I, I have friends who act as almost like pseudo-advisors 
who help curate and try to build up new communities that are based off of like different topics. So we look at like different subreddits, and we're trying to take you know a, a, a Discord from like 50 people up to like 500. Is that something that Discord is looking at helping the community like you know kind of grow, kind of like how YouTube has? If you want to build a YouTube channel and you want to get a 10,000 subscribers, here's our model. And here are our statistics on how to how to use our platform accordingly, or like what are the best practices? Is that something that you guys would be? Yeah, I mean, there's do? a whole community. There's a, the, a good question as well. There's a whole community team. If you if you think about it, you know, there's this Discord started as this small group of guy, people, developers, that wanted to bring their friends together around gaming, and now we're like, whoa, we're this big in gaming now, but gaming is this big. You know, you've got consoles and you've got mobile and you've got big folks that haven't adopted Discord yet, and you know, there's no official Blizzard channels, and there's no official Valve channels, and there's people that just aren't here yet. So even within that space, we haven't hit that area. Um, and then there's what we're hearing exactly what you're talking about is the rest of the world. I mean, Discord is designed as a platform for people to talk, talk and make friends for anything. And I have friends that do it for fantasy football. They do it because they follow the band Fish. Uh, they do it, like there's all kinds, there's, there's stock trading, there's Bitcoin, there's all kinds of things that people, and if you're an advisor on these things. Um, while best practice for community definitely exists, our, our ability to focus on non-gaming as, again, I'll go back to that 180 people startup that are that's established this much and there's still much this much white space in gaming. Um, yes, we love that, but we don't, you know what I mean? We, we're, we, yeah, cur cur currently not, you know, currently, currently. But we, we encourage people to use the platform in that, in that way. Um, and usually, usually what ends up happening is somebody comes in for gaming and then says, well, if I could do this for this, then I'll use it for managing my, my, um, my uh, development team or my alpha or my, oh, look, we've got this softball group or whatever it happens to be, or my friends from college, and it, it can morph out of it. But as far as like a, a focus on that, probably after we're saturated in the gaming space. But, but please, continue to use it, continue to give feedback, continue to, to do all of those things. 504, well, ran over. Um, if anybody has further questions, I'm gonna stick around for a little bit. Um, if you see me out at the, uh, the garden, is that where the party is? Out on the lawn? Out on the lawn, yeah. Lawn, lawn. Uh, I'll be out there for a little bit, but then I got a Twilight ticket. I'm going to go in the park because I want to go see Star Wars Land. So, so. Thank you, everybody, for, uh, for listening and engaging if you want. Questions, I got business cards. Um, please come say hi. Awesome. Thank you, everybody.